Hello, cats and kittens. I'm Lex, and I am your crochet fiberist. You know what we should do? I think you and I should sit down, relax, and prepare to fiber. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, it's been a while. Uh, life, holidays, what can I say? Um, you are seeing me in my natural state of hair. It happens on occasion. Um, so you're not seeing somebody new. It's just life, hair, any trons. Um, we've got a lot to talk about, and my husband promised me 45 minutes of uninterrupted talking, so I'm going to get right on our podcast. We've got some standard things, newsies. Um, it, we have something in the hooked. Um, uh, the kits, uh, kitting it out, uh, my bucket list project, um, wearable art, and some spinning. Some spinning. I forgot what the thingies were. <laughs> I forgot what the segments were called. Oh my goodness. Um, but yes, there is some uh, Spinmeister. Um, and we will do another holiday song. Um, Chris, I, yeah, another holiday song. So stay tuned, buckle your seat, and let's get ready. All right. Newsies. I wanted to show you guys a couple of things I picked up when I went on my yarn crawly thing. I think I showed you some things, and like I said, this isn't going to be, the show is not going to be turned into, see all my shiny things, but it will be, you know, these are some really interesting uh, buys that I picked up. So let me grab a few of them, and I don't remember if I did this last week. I don't think I did. Um, but forgive me if I did. Give me a second. You know what? I've got this thing called notes, and I am going to use them. Okay? Alrighty. Hmm. Okay. First notes, um, I um, wanted to let uh, Laura, sorry, Linda Denton know that your um, package will be in the mail tomorrow and I will send you the relevant information at that point. So I haven't forgotten you, please forgive me, holidays. That's all I can say about that. Anyway, so I wanted to show you a couple of things that have come through the mail, whether through the yarn crawl, um, the pajama jammy jam, or the um, just stuff that's been coming in. Um, so let me get started with probably the biggest uh, yarn cake I've seen in the last six months. It's not the biggest, but it's it's pretty pretty substantial. So like, bam! Isn't that awesome? Isn't that color yummy? You guys are. I don't know if you're seeing it. Oh, actually, that looks a lot like it. It's it's this yummy, yummy blue that's over dyed in black. Um, it is a Blue Moon Fiber Arts uh, yarn. And while I've never been into their into her uh, line of socks at Rock, or her sock yarn, um, I'm fascinated by all of her other fiber line, uh, all of her other yarn lines. Um, she has a yarn line called Woo Boo, which is I think 6040 uh, merino bamboo and you get a huge yardage like 600 yards it's incredible so this however was um, kind of a special holiday yarn and I saw it and um, she was like I only had 160 skeins so I had to grab one so the best thing about Bloom and Fibers Arts is that you see the color you, you see the yarn but when you're buying the yarn she makes it as you buy it so it's not it's not just sitting there waiting for you to come pick it up it's like it's intended for you. So once you put in that color choice, your yarn is being custom designed as they speak. And it's awesome. And I finally picked it up. So um, this is Targi Silk. It's called Silky, you know, Single Silky Targi. Um, the colorway is Haida, H-A-I-D-A. And this is from her Raven Clan collection colorways. Um, which is basically colors that are over dyed in black and they're fantastic. 
Um, I can't recommend her stuff highly enough. Um, I've used a lot of her yarns and I've only heard good things. Targi really does something to my soul, so I'm really, really excited to use this. Um, there's a 696 yards, and that explains the giant, the giantness of this, uh, the ball. So there's this. All right. Um, and this, I think I talked about this last week, but I'm still in love with this. The flock, it's a verb for keeping warm. Uh, the colorway is indigo. And the indigo pot was, um, the indigo vat was created in California. So this is, the yarn was made in, Cal uh, was sourced and made in California. And the um, local, and the local color was here in Cali. So it's like a super, super Cali yarn. So that's one thing. So that's those two things. I think other than that, you've seen all the other stuff that I had. Um, from the yarn curls, but I wanted to make sure I showed you those two because I was really psyched about them. Anyway, unhooked. Um, I'm going to post a picture at right about now of um, the things that I finished for um, my work tree. Uh, a friend, uh, one of the co-workers, uh, one of the guys I work with, we all work in this teeny tiny little room, and uh, one of the guys brought in a teeny tiny little tree and we decorated them we decorated the tree so I think last time we talked I showed you one of the um, items and uh, I'll show you the finished tree right about here and I'm so excited it was a lot of fun and we've been getting a lot of comments from the other uh, our other co-workers and it's just been a really pleasant um, reminder of the holidays so um, the other, I think I did two other, uh, um, ornaments. I did another little bear. I didn't put the eyes on that bear. And then I did a little stocking and I should probably find the pattern for that. Cause that was really, really brilliant and it's really, really cute. So there's that. All right, let us move on to what I've been working on. Um, and in that moment, I, I stand in solidarity with all of my brothers and sisters who are watching Star Wars tonight. I was not able to do that. I'm hoping to do it this weekend. But in solidarity, I present the Star Wars black bag. That glows in the dark. Yes, it does. And I think I've told you this was um, made by my friend, RK's mom. And she has a store on Etsy. And she does amazing nerd things. Anyway, so, whew, I've got the eternally thrice cursed Andromeda uh, shawl, and there's a reason why this thing is thrice cursed. Um, at one point, it was in Schrodinger's box, as it were, um, meaning I was not entirely certain if it existed or not, and in fact, in my notes, I had a note that said, you know, does it exist? Does it not? Schrodinger's uh, cat. And I, I kind of, Schrod no, what was I calling it? Schrodinger's purgatory or something like that. Because um, I went out to eat with my coworkers um, last Friday and I was going to, um, I brought some projects and I brought this one and I thought I left it at the venue that we went to. Uh, to go eat at, but it turned out I left it at my coworker's house, so he brought it over, and I was so happy. Anyway, we have finally crossed the event horizon, i.e. the middle. You can tell because that beautiful, oh, sorry, huh, I'm showing you the wrong side. Um, you can tell because we have passed the green marker. I cannot tell you how happy I am to be on um, over half the way done. <laughs> I'm trying not to twitch. Um, I, if any, if I ever, 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 I love working on this. I think it's beautiful. I can't wait to wear it. Um, it's going to be the most striking thing I've made in years. But it's going to take a long time before I start working on um, 
even heavy lace weight or, or, uh, or fingering or light fingering. It's going to take a while before I'm going to want to delve into that again. So um, I'm hoping it'll be done at the end of the year. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I've got some ideas about how to make that happen, but I also have tentative plans to go visit my rents for the holidays. So I'm not entirely certain how this is going to shape up. I do want it done by the end of the year, though. So, you know, cheer me on. Let me know what you guys are working on, trying to get done, uh, not necessarily for the holidays, but your end of the year goals. Um, this is definitely one of them. I want to wear this. It deserves to be seen and, and glommed onto and jealously stroked by other people, not just me. So, oh. All right, so we're on that. <laughs> Let's see what else is in the bag. So when I, the two days that I didn't know if I had that um, project or not, I went from being irate and furious with the entire universe and being zen and thinking to myself, maybe I should start a bunch of other different projects so I never get too obsessed with one project ever again. So I started something else. This is... Ugh. This is Geometry Subverted, and Geometry Subverted is a shawl I've shown you guys before. It starts with a uh, narrow right triangle, and then you kind of create a um, trapezoid, and the way it's shaped looks like a like five-pointed shawl. Anyway, it's going to be cool. Um, I'll show you. I'll either post a picture of um, my current one. Or I'll show you next week is probably how that's going to work. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, I like the, um, the narrow little triangle to be my uh, wingspan. So I've got quite a bit to go. Um, I'm increasing every on every row. And uh, wait, no, every other row, sorry. To get that um, narrow triangle thing going on. And the yarn is... Um, ooh, I've got the little thingy still. I got this from Little Knits. This is Yaktastic. It's 100% Tibetan yak. It's 490 yards and 50 grams. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty thread. It's, it's not quite thread, but it's definitely finer than stuff I normally work with. So I figured it would be better to work with uh, uh, if I doubled it. So that's what I did. Um, I had two skeins of it, so it's perfect. And um, I never quite figured out what to use this yarn for, so I think this will be a nice, nice touch. I'm thinking of, the reason I showed you the flock this episode is I think we will be using that as the um, trapezoid uh, section of this project so it'll be blue on blue which is great because like blue is totally for me personally blue is a neutral and so I consider it in the same realm that I consider a black or a gray or anything like that so there's that <sighs> let's see oh I've got a couple more things this is another thing I started in my reflective moments after realizing I couldn't find my shawl. Um, this is another hat. I tell I told you guys last time I was working on I was on a hat binge that it takes about four hours, but that's if you just work through. Um, sorry, give me a second. I I've just been working on this off and on. If you can't tell. It's in the round, but I am creating the um, the folded hem. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm picking up um, the public stitch here. Can you see that? Ugh. So I'm picking up the public stitch here, and then I'm picking up the stitch behind it, and just like joining them together and once I get around, it'll be a nice firm brim, and then I can work on the rest of the hat. 
Um, the yarn is pretty incredible. This is um, Clara Yarns. I believe this is, this might be Clara Yarns 1.0. This is Cormo 1.0, I think. Um, the ball band is inside of the ball of fiber. Um, but this is Cormo, and this was um, dyed by one of the indie dyers she uh, contracted with. And it's just gorgeous. It's um, a dark, dark purple, or um, a very tonal purple. It's not going to be for me, although I love this yarn immensely. And this is a really rare yarn because there's no way I can get any more of it. Um, but I think it'll be a nice gift for someone if I can manage to get um, the hat done. I might work on that this weekend. So there's that. And finally, the last project in my reflective series <laughs> is this. Um, I think I showed you last week when I went um, on my yarn crawl with my friend. Um, I'm going to call her. I'm going to call her Awesome Girl. So my friend Awesome Girl and I went to a couple of yarn shops in Oakland in the Berkeley area. And we stopped at Piedmont Yarn and Apparel which is in a really trendy part of Oakland. It's very, very pretty. And I picked up this, which is amazing. This is Kathmandu, and I believe it's Merino um, Silk Cashmere, I think to the tune of 80, 10, 5, or something like that. It's not, it's, the cashmere is negligible, but you, you feel, they have to tell you that there's cashmere in it, right? I guess, whatever. Yeah, it's 85 uh, cashmere, 10% silk, 5% wool. Um, it's got a kind of tweedy effect, though it isn't, I think, technical. It may be tweed. I don't think it's technical, um, like Harris tweed or anything like that. But anyway, it's a lovely, lovely turquoise kind of thing. And I decided to, at first I was going to do a bottom-up sweater. And I decided my hands didn't really want to do that. Because uh, it would have been a yarn, a, a sweater in pieces, and I just wasn't in the mood. So I did in the round, and as you can see, I would, in a perfect world, I would like to start separate for sleeves, but rationally, I know I'm not there yet. So I've got some more work to do on this. Um, here is actually the join. I'm finding that the more I work with um, my Tunisian weave stitch, the better I get at my joins and the less noticeable they are. In fact, this is going to be the front of the work. And I think with a good blocking and a good washing, nobody will be able to tell where the join is. So I'm really, really excited about that. And uh, because I want it done relatively quick, I'm working on a J hook, but it works with this yarn because it's kind of chunky. It's, um, I think, 208 yards for 100 grams. Yeah, something like that. So it's a pretty substantially worsted -y kind of weight, uh, worsted erin kind of weight. So yeah. So those are the things that are in... These are the things I am kidding out, and I'm enjoying them immensely. Um, it's kind of nice to have a bunch of new projects as I'm finishing this eternal, infernal project. I know I'm going to love it. I just, I just need something else to occupy my mind that isn't the exact same stitch for 500 billion stitches. Okay, I'm just being honest. I love it. I will probably make another one. It will probably be in worsted weight. That's all I'm saying. Okay, now we come to the fun, funner, the funnest part of our episode, which is when I talk about my bucket list project. Let me go grab it and we will talk about it. Sorry, guys, all in your face. So, oh, you already saw it. No need to hide then. So when I first started spinning, um, and maybe you guys have had this experience, um, I learned how to spin with a bunch of other people in my yarn group at the time. And the interesting thing was some people just gravitated to it 
instantly and they're able to make really consistent fine yarn like suddenly and it was so maddening because um, one thing I've learned about myself is I don't have incredible coordination with physical coordination so um, learning how to spin took a really really long time and learning how to spin well took even longer um, I'm proud at my progress and I think I've gotten really really good but it did take a very very long time for my fingers and my brain to coordinate themselves what can I say so for a long time I was making fat chunky yarns a lot longer than probably any of my other fiber friends it was kind of sad <laughs> so what I decided to do as I finally got better and better uh, the first thing I decided to do was keep all the yarn um, part of me wanted to chuck it all out because I didn't find it beautiful I didn't think it would be useful but looking back I'm really really glad I kept it and the other thing I did while I was in that process of working on very chunky yarns and not being able to get my yarn fine consistently, I started working on a log cabin. So I'll show you guys this. This is my log cabin made up of fibers that were gifted to me and fibers I bought for myself. And it was, I can't tell you how much I love this piece. It's not really long enough to be anything other than a rug, but it really does represent um, my work. And it also represents um, lessons learned. For example, I will be patching this up tonight. I've got some ideas on how to do that. So I'll be patching that up tonight. But this is held up really, really well, and I really, really love it. And it really just kind of allows me to appreciate where I've come from and also to get some use out of something that I didn't think was beautiful. Um, that's kind of the reason I continue to do my rustic denim bags. Um, I'm searching for that sense of beauty out of ashes and out of imperfection. And I think in a lot of ways, though the colors don't match on this at all, um, the textures are entirely different. There's a lot to, there's a lot the critical eye could say to this project. But to me, it says, I've come very, very far. And I love the thing. I loved the state I was in when I was in it. So that is my rustic hand spun blanket. And that's the story behind it. I keep it on the bed when it gets chilly. Um, I hand wash it because there is no way it is going anywhere near a washer or dryer and it it just it follows me wherever I go I hope to have that for a long time and I hope to eventually have a good um, collection of hand spun to make into another version of the log cabin uh, blanket and that's and it was just half uh, double crochet and you know you did the rectangle and then you kind of build your rectangles around it and I just created a you know I'm gonna use this many rows and as the yarn ran out you know you just add more yarn from something else so it's not gonna be a pretty thing but it is going to be a useful thing now where were we okay we are now on to wearable art so let me show you the sorts of things I was wearing this week um, the weather's been you know chilly rainy uh, us lucky folks in uh, Cali have finally got the much desired rain and with the much desired rain came the much desired the much not so desired cold so um, so here's some of the things I wore this is one of my uh, cowls that I made a while ago. I really love this thing. It's fantastic. Um, one of these days I will write up a pattern, but um, the yarn is Eco Cloud, and I believe that is a Cascade yarn. It's a chainette, and I believe it's Merino Alpaca. And this fun ribbon 
is actually merino ribbon and that is from mountain colors so i striped them between i think the interesting thing i did was uh, the design wasn't really in the ribbon stitch it was in the black i figured that would make for a more striking um product and i i i think it turned out beautifully so there's that um when i'm home i'm pretty much always in one of my popovers but i've been wearing this one a ton because it's just so cozy this is out of plymouth air and it is so wonderful um, i put it over my long uh long sleeve t-shirts and it's absolutely beautiful okay and i always do a i like wearing a twa because they are very very versatile i think i talked about this if not last episode the episode before but it functions as a shawl and a scarf and a cowl and a wrap it's just a really really versatile piece so i've been wearing this a lot um, of course i've been wearing it my geometry subverted and my um, ziggurat uh, remixed in the uh, dark grays and the green blue um, i really really like that and i really like the way that turned out so um anything else I'm working with wearing oh i did wear this I don't even know if I've ever decided what this is called, but I like wearing this a lot. And it's that perfect accent piece if you're wearing all black. Um, I find that I have to dress a little more professionally at this particular loca locale. So having that little pop of color um, does wonders for my mood. And for, um, it's a very interesting piece that gets a lot of questions. So there we go. There you have it. That is, all I did for wearable art. So let's see. Um, is that everything? Oh, of course I wore the Beale hats. Um, in fact, I wore one when I first washed my hair and decided to go natural because I was a little bit uncertain how the um, how people were going to take it. But I found that people were really, really receptive and really liked the do. And I find as I get older, um, I really, really like my hair naturally um, styled. It's, it, it's a different personality. And it's kind of cool that um, I have hair that does that naturally. It's like, it's like my hair is a mix. And you fiber lovers will, may identify with this. It's like my hair is a mix between Lincoln and Winsleydale curls. So, except I think they might be a little softer, maybe, I don't know. Um, so I've got that really fun curl, but if you brush it out, it's, it gets curly and the difference is my hair also gets kinky. So I have to be careful about how that works out, but I've, I've enjoyed um, comparing my hair to different uh, fiber fleeces that I've worked with in the past. So there's that. Okay. Spinmeister, I have something to show you. Um, da, 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 da. Yay! Real excited about this. Okay, so I finished doing a basic spin, and this is all that's left after I plied it with something else. The stuff that's left, I don't know if you can see it, doesn't isn't representative of my normal um i it took me a really long time to get the balance of how this yarn really wanted to play this stuff is not representative of what i ended up plying and so once i started seeing the difference this is when i first started spinning it um i decided i didn't really want that in my yarn at least not as is so here is what happened when I plied um, the Pagora cashmere that I showed you last week with some merino yak silk that I had in my stash. Is it going to be temperamental or? No, it should be okay, I think. So here you go. Here it is. I'll let you guys see it a little bit closer. 
This is about 130 yards. I still have half of the merino yak silk, which is the beautiful greenish, grayish yarn. I don't know how well you guys can see it. I'll try to get better pictures and maybe post them in the uh, when I when I start editing uh, the podcast. Um, but it's really really interesting. Um, let me wind this up and maybe you'll be able to see at least this part. You can definitely see the uh, fibers poking out, and that is mainly the pagora. And it's a longer fiber than the cashmere, definitely. Um, the spin took a really long time to get a handle on. I decided to do long draw, and I the, my first attempts put way too much twist in the yarn um, to the extent that it wouldn't be nice yarn to work with um, in the future. Once I made the yarn less, less once I put less twist in the yarn you could see the fibers kind of opening up and, but it wasn't so open that the yarn was coming apart. It's a really interesting texture and a really interesting tension that I'm sure all uh, spinners know well. Um, but what I'm really excited about with this yarn, you can see there's a lot of personality. I haven't washed it. I kind of wanted to show you guys because um, now that we have entered a California rainy season, it will take forever and a half for this to dry once I wash it. So I'm kind of wanted you to see it now because um, the next time you see it, it'll probably be two or three weeks from now when it's finally dry. So I'm anticipating a lot of um, interesting things happening with this. For one thing, the Pagora is going to poof, the, the Pagora um, fibers are going to stick out even more like a porcupine. For the other thing, um, the cashmere is going to poof rather significantly, I think, to make a chunkier yarn. And um, also the merino silk, not the, the merino yak silk, the yak is going to bloom quite a bit too. So this is going to be what now looks like sport weight will probably be worsted. That is what I'm guessing, but it's, it's going to be gorgeous and it's going to feel nice. Um, I think this will tell me if this is going to be like a uh, sweater yarn or something that I create, I use as kind of like stock yarn, um, stock plying yarn. And I wanted to talk about that for a little bit. Um, sometimes, I know for me, I like I said, I'm, I'm no master spinner or anything. I'm just somebody who really enjoys uh, the art. But one of the things I like about... Um, spinning a good quantity of whatever you're spinning is that you'll have that to apply with all sorts of things. I went through this phase where I was, um, I worked on a project I called an ounce of everything. So I worked, um, I spun up a neutral and I think it was another Pagora um, yarn, but it was just straight Pagora. So I spun a ton of that and plied it with little bits and bobs that I'd been collecting or um, half finished projects or um, little bobbins worth of uh, fiber and just plying it with this yarn. And you do that long enough and you create these beautiful skeins because it's, you, you, I know for me at one point I was really being decisive about why I would choose one color over the other, but it's equally fun to just kind of go wild. Um, I've got some eerie silk that would go fantastically with this yarn, but I also have, um, some yarns that would be better that are not even in that color family that would go equally well with that yarn. Um, and that's why I kind of consider this Pagora kind of like a stock plying yarn. Um, once I figure out, uh, how it's going to bloom and, um, what it works best with, I can pair it with different things in my stash and create something really spectacular. Um, I've given serious thought if it works out to uh, apply it with my Merino cashmere project that I've been working on for a while and probably the leftovers of my um, sweater yarn that's in Totoro. So we'll see how that turns out and I will definitely keep you guys informed. Okay. <laughs> and on that happy note, um, 
I apologize. We're going to have short episodes probably through the holidays until everything kind of resettles itself. Um, Rediscovered Stitches, I think, will probably start in the new year. Um, we're going to be working through, we're going to do the wedge stitch, and I've got a cute little bag that we will be working on probably uh, mid to late January, and that'll be a lot of fun. And I'm anticipating some other things, some travels. I've got, I finally found a fiber friend to travel with, so I'm hoping that will translate to more travels. And um, so yeah, on that happy note, um, you are warned, uh, the musical interlude or the outro will be starting in a couple of minutes, but until uh, next time, fiber on and happy holidays. <laughs>